2014 News Now begins with breaking news. We're learning more about that deadly attempted prison break in Pasquotec County. Yeah, authorities now say Seth Frazier, Wiza Buckman, and Mikhail Brady, along with Jonathan Mung, lit fires to get out of that prison. Three employees still being treated now. It's in Terra Norfolk General Hospital. 13 News Now reporter Jemmy Lee is live at the sheriff's office where she learned the inmates face first degree murder charges. And Jemmy, you learned more charges are pending. That's right, more charges are pending against all four of these men. In fact, this case is going to the grand jury on October 30th. That's when the district attorney and law enforcement investigators will present evidence to obtain indictments against all four of these individuals. Now, to be clear, uh, these four men haven't officially been charged with the two counts of first degree murder yet. That's because they're being held in higher security prisons elsewhere. Three of them are being held in Butner, North Carolina, and and one is being held in Central Prison in Raleigh. All of them will be transported back to Pasquotank County sometime next week so that these warrants can be served. But the sheriff wanted to make clear that these men are not going back to the Pasquotank Correctional Institution. They will be transported straight to the sheriff's office to be processed and fingerprinted, and then they will go right back to the prisons in Butner and Raleigh. Now, District Attorney Andrew Womble said that first degree murder is the most serious crime that anyone can be charged with in the state of North Carolina. So these guys could be looking at the death penalty or life without parole. Now we are still waiting on the autopsies for Veronica Darden and Justin Smith, and we know that two employees are still in the hospital in critical condition. Officials are not going into much detail about their injuries, but the sheriff did say today that they were not burned from this fire. We don't have any evidence that says the fire was you know, if anybody was burned, we would still look about smoke and, and things like that is. But the fire, I think, will, will come out is, is more as a diversion. Now, we are learning more about the criminal history of all four of these men. Some of them were serving time for some very serious crimes, including attempted first degree murder. We'll have much more on their criminal past coming up in our four o'clock, five o'clock and six o'clock newscasts. For now, reporting live in Pasquotank County, I'm Jemmy Lee, 13 News Now. Jemmy, thank you. Well, there will be a memorial for Justin Smith and Veronica Darden, who died in the attempted escape. The correctional workers both worked in the sewing facility. Memorial Memorial services are scheduled for this weekend. We've got more information on 13newsnow.com. Developing now, an improvised explosive device goes off overnight in Williamsburg. Yeah, the device blew up on the corner of Merchant Square. Police have been scouring the scene since 5 o'clock yesterday. That's where Elise Brown is live now. Elise invest investigators thought this was a car fire at first. Yeah, that's right, Christina. This whole area has been blocked off for about 19 hours. We understand police had to wait until daylight to continue their investigation, getting to the bottom of who planted this device. Uh, there was an explosive device last night. You're witnessing the moment when police told Jesse Chase on her car is a part of a crime scene. It's in a parking lot where someone detonated an improvised explosive device, or IED. It happened around 5 o'clock Thursday afternoon. It's really surprising. I think of Williamsburg as a really safe community. I don't think of a lot of crime happening here. But today, the area around the intersection of Francis and South Boundary, a place that Chase on considers safe, is surrounded by police and FBI. The device was detonated near the vehicle. Not only is this a neighborhood, but it's also near the College of William and Mary. Chason told us she didn't get an alert from the school. That is sort of surprising. I've gotten alerts from most of the crime that happens close to campus, and this is extremely close to campus. We reached out to school officials to find out why. They told us no immediate alert was given to students because there was no ongoing threat. However, they did send out an email this morning. Now it is homecoming weekend. The school tells us this event won't have any impacts on what they have planned for this weekend. We'll continue to keep you updated as the story develops. Live in Williamsburg, Elise Brown, 13 News Now. Art Elise, thank you for that. You can always get the latest information on the story on 13newsnow.com. Also by downloading our free 13 News Now app. 
Virginia's gubernatorial candidates are turning up the heat in the final weeks before Election Day. Virginia Senator Tim Kaine is stepping up for Lieutenant Governor Ralph Northam. He's campaigning around the area with stops in Norfolk and Chesapeake. He's holding a small business owners meeting off Araby Road in Norfolk around 1.15 p.m. At 3, he's stopping by Ralph Northam's campaign office at Sam Circle in Chesapeake. And just down the road on Battlefield Boulevard at 4 p.m., he's attending a meet and greet with Councilwoman Ella Ward. Former President Barack Obama was back on the campaign trail last night for Northam at the Greater Richmond Convention Center. Mr. Obama spoke about the current state of politics and said democracy is at stake. They trusted him to do the right thing, even when nobody's looking. And isn't that what we want in our leaders? Isn't that who we want making tough decisions on our behalf? Well, many experts are looking at this Virginia gubernatorial election as a hint of what's to come in next year's midterm elections. And Republican candidate Ed Gillespie spent yesterday here in Hampton Roads. He spoke with the Norfolk and Portsmouth Bar Association at their monthly luncheon. Later in the day, he met with voters in Chesapeake. Tomor tomorrow, Gillespie will be back here in Hampton Roads. Congressman Scott Taylor is joining him in Virginia Beach at 4 o'clock.